it has become popular for people to say, yes, I can see the historic evidence that proves Jesus actually lived, but I don't think he was God or some type of deity that was here on earth. I think he was simply a man. C.S. Lewis addressed this idea when he said, I'm trying here to prevent anyone saying the really foolish thing that people often say about Jesus. I'm ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I don't accept his claim to be God. That is one thing we must not say. A man who was merely a man and said the sort of things Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would either be a lunatic on a level with a man who says he is a poached egg, or else he would be the devil of hell. You must make your choice. Either this man was and is the Son of God, or else a madman, or something worse. You can shut him up for a fool, you can spit on him and kill him as a demon, or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God, but let us not come up with any patronizing nonsense about his being a great human teacher. He has not left that open to us. He did not intend to. You see, there is historical evidence that proves Jesus is and was a historical person, but that evidence goes further and shows that not only was he a historical person, but Jesus indeed is God. Now, let's look at five reasons that we can know Jesus is divine. Reason number one, Jesus accepted worship. You see, if Jesus was just a good man, good men don't accept worship as a god. You see, several times in the Bible when people were trying to worship an angel, the angel would say, no, don't worship me, worship only God. Sometimes the apostles were worshipped and they would stop the people who were worshipping them and say, no, don't worship me, worship only God. And yet Jesus... Jesus, who is recognized as a man whose character was perfect, he accepted worship. There in Matthew chapter 14, verse 33, it says that those who saw Jesus walk on the water worshiped him. John 9, 38 says that the blind man who Jesus healed later confessed his belief in Jesus as the Son of God and worshiped him after Jesus rose from the dead and he appeared to those women at the tomb. The text says they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. You see, good men don't accept worship. Jesus Christ was not just a good man. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh, and that's why he accepts worship. Reason number two, Jesus forgave sins. If you were to sin and your friend was sitting there, maybe a, a very righteous person, and your friend looked over at you and you had done something that was sinful, and your friend said, your sins are forgiven you, what would you do? You would probably laugh because you would recognize that other human beings don't have the capability or prerogative to forgive sins, and yet Jesus... Jesus forgave sins. At one point in his ministry, a woman came to Jesus. He was a visitor in a person's house, and she came and met him there, and she washed his feet with her hair. And Jesus responded to this woman and said, Your sins are forgiven you. Well, of course, the other visitors at the table, they marveled at the statement, and they began to say to themselves, the text of Luke chapter 7 says, who is this who even forgives sins? Good humans don't purport to have the prerogative to forgive sins. They don't think that they can say, your sins are forgiven, and something spiritual happens in that case. Jesus, on the other hand, Jesus forgave sins with the confidence that He truly was, in a spiritual sense, forgiving sins. Reason number three, Jesus claimed to be God. That's a fact. Good men don't claim to be God. And yet Jesus, who was one of the most perfect moral characters ever written, in fact, changed that statement to the most perfect moral character ever written about in ancient history or in modern history. He said he was God. In John chapter 8, verses 57 and 58, 
The Bible says, Then the Jews said to him, You're not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? And Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. What did he mean when he said, I am? He was harking back to that Old Testament passage where Moses asked God what his name was that he could report to the Israelites. And God told Moses that his name was the great I Am. You see, not long after that, the Jews attempted to stone Jesus. And Jesus said, why are you trying to stone me? What good work have I done that you're trying to stone me for? And they replied, for a good work, we don't try to stone you, but for blasphemy, because you being a man, make yourself God. They recognized that Jesus was saying He was God. Reason number four. The Old Testament prophecies said that the Messiah would be God. Fact of the matter is, Jesus fulfilled every messianic prophecy and showed Himself to be the fulfillment of all of them in every single detail. And yet when we look at those prophecies, we see the very clear message that the Messiah was God. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and following says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. You see, even the prophecies about the Messiah said, stated clearly that the Messiah would be God. And number five, Jesus' followers worshipped Him as God. In about 110 AD, a man by the name of Pliny the Younger was a Roman official. He was writing to the emperor Trajan. He was talking about having to persecute and prosecute people who were coming to him who were called Christians. And he had been asking them questions, interrogating them, and he said, this was their answer to me. They asserted, however, that the sum and substance of their fault and error had been that they were accustomed to meet on a fixed day before dawn and sing responsively a hymn to Christ as to a God and to bind themselves by oath not to some crime but not to commit fraud, theft, or adultery. They were worshiping Jesus as God in 110 A.D. and following because that's who Jesus was and is. You see, this evidence should bring about the same response in us as the evidence brought about in Thomas, who when he touched the side of Christ and the hands that had been pierced, he came to Jesus and said, My Lord and my God.